What up, dudes? It's Gaz, and welcome back to the Warframe video. So we got Daviri coming out in a little bit over 24 hours from right now. And yeah, we're doing a last minute Daviri prep guide while also going over a bunch of the stuff they showed on their official primetime stream the other day that had a lot of Daviri uh, gameplay aspects. And we pretty much frame by framed it for like an hour and a half on stream. Uh, and yeah, we know way too much. So if you don't want any spoilers, you want to go into Daviri entirely blind, this is the wrong channel for you. Uh, I'm surprised you didn't even realize that, but we're going deep dive on the Daviri spoilers. So if you want to stay out of it, just go away right now. Uh, but either way, we're going to be doing a lot of min-maxing here. We're going to be looking forward as well on what you can do if you want to get the most out of your Daviri time. Of course, we don't have any information on like the Aura Worm boss fight uh, and a couple other things. So we'll have to wait until it actually comes out for some of this stuff. But yeah, not everything. So we'll be going over that today. Hope you guys enjoy these videos. If you do enjoy these videos, make sure you're sub to the channel. We'll be doing a new Daviri video every 12 hours at least once the update comes out. And yeah, I'll be going crazy. We'll be streaming too. So check out the live channel as well if you want to check out that stuff live. All right, so for Daviri, this will be like a last minute prep guide thing. Uh, we're also going to be going over that, like I said, their little dev stream. So let's quickly show some of the stuff from their dev stream that they were going over. Um, and the big thing is going to, one of the big things is going to be the different, the three different game modes that are for Daviri and how this will in, be involved with the Incarnon unlockers for the Incarnon Awakening system they're adding with this update. So we have the left side, it's called the circuit. That's going to be the Warframe only mode where it's basically no like walking around as Drifter and like picking up like rocks and stuff. You will load into here. Now, the thing about the circuit mode is it's, it's actually going to be similar to the Viri where it's like, okay, you get like random gear thrown at you and you have to decide which one you want to run in that mission. So it's not going to be like, okay, I'm just going to go in there with my Umbra, fully Tau Garuda, and like the Verma Splicer or the Tonkor and kill everything unconditionally. No, you will be given random, or rather, it's, it's going to choose from all the different gear in the game and you will have to choose which ones you want to use. Uh, and of course, having higher levels of intrinsics are going to let you have more options. Now, the circuit mode we were just talking about is going to be where you get access to these Incarnon unlockers. Uh, and they did give us a, a lot of details on how this is actually going to work. Now, as far as which Incarnon unlockers you will have available to you, everyone in the game will have the same five options is what they were saying. And it will rotate on a weekly basis, uh, you know, cor uh, corresponding to the same weekly reset day as like Nightwave and stuff. So here's the big first tip. If you are a late game player and you want to get as many Incarnate Unlockers as possible, Daviri is coming out on a Wednesday, uh, this Wednesday, that uh, tomorrow rather. So if you want to get four Incarnate Unlockers this week, you will need to do this farm and grind before Sunday's reset. I'm not sure how terrible it will be, but keep in mind, you will be playing Steel Path gameplay with pretty much randomized gear. So going forward, if you want to get this stuff right away, what I'd recommend to you is that you play Daviri on day one, get get access to this as quickly as possible to be in the Steel Path circuit, and uh, rank that stuff up. Basically, you're going to grind XP in that circuit mission to get to level 5 and level 10 like a progress bar. At level 5, you'll get access to the first Incarnate Adapter you chose, and level 10, you'll get access to the second Incarnate Adapter you chose. Uh, and... As far as I can tell, if you do not complete these objectives, like getting rank 5 and rank 10 by Sunday, you will lose that progress is what I am, it's what I am interpreting this as. So for, depending what you think is cool, I'm going to most likely go for the Paris Incarnon and maybe the Lado Incarnon. Um, but I also, I think it's kind of lame that like it's not random for everybody. Everybody in the game is going to have these same five options and they will rotate on Sunday. So let's say I want to go for the Paris and the Lado, whatever. I have a good Paris ribbon. I've got some pretty bad Lado ribbons, unfortunately. What I'm going to do is I'm going to, on, on uh, Wednesday, I'm going to immediately start. Oh, actually, I, I'm going to grind some intrinsics first because doing this with no intrinsics might kind of suck because you're going to have like no options. You're going to have only one option. On the normal path, the normal path you'll be able to choose instead of like steel path stuff uh, for incarnate unlockers. For the normal path, you'll be able to choose a frame and work toward farming a frame, uh, which could be kind of cool for new players. Like for example, farming Trinity is from Ambulus. Ambulus boss fight takes way too long, so this is a way you can alternatively farm for Trinity while also getting some other loot along the way. So here's what I'm talking about. So they did not show the steel path version of this, but just imagine this little chart here on the left. Uh, but instead of level 5 there being a Trinity Prime chassis, there will be the 
the Paris and Cardinal Locker you decided to pick. And level 10 will be the Lado and Cardinal Tapter you decide to pick. So you will grind XP to move this progress bar up to get access to your Cardinal Unlockers. And again, it says right there, rewards reset in three days, one hour. You have a time limit. You need to grind the Steel Path circuit with your randomized gear, which hopefully has a good build on it. We'll talk about it in a second, uh, to get these Incarnate Unlockers. So grind this out before Sunday, the Steel Path version, that is. Uh, and then you can get two more on Sunday, which will not be the same uh, options. So they said there will be 20 options at launch, and they'll add more down the road. So yeah, these are your five options. I'd say as far as Daviri prep, from these five choices right here, I'd say make sure you have one of these leveled up to a certain degree. Paris Prime is probably going to be pretty good. Lado Prime, we already saw, is going to be pretty good. Um, get a decent build on this. Oh, by the way, speaking of builds, uh, this is going to be one of the annoying aspects. So they go into the little... So this is going to be the circuit mode right here. But as you see, before they get into the circuit mode, they get to choose the weapons. There are certain options available to us. Looks like Megan got the Strofa, which seems pretty lucky. So in this little cave right here, you will choose what gear you will bring into the circuit. This is why potentially it might be annoying on the steel path because you're not going to be able to choose what kind of gear you want to run. Uh, potentially, if you have a bunch of copies of some frame like Yorelli or something, it might give you multiple options. But another problem here as well, as you can see on Megan's screen, she's going to choose Banshee Prime. In her own words, she had recently just gotten Banshee Prime and her Banshee Prime was level zero. When she loaded into the mission, her Banshee Prime was level zero. So if you don't have all this stuff leveled up, you're going to be forced to use what they call a loner build, which will have like just like a normal intensify, a normal continuity, redirection, whatever. Um, so if you want to play the Steel Path version of this, this is going to sound very try hard, but just bear with me. You might want to have a good build on pretty much every item that you that you have, honestly. If you don't have a good build for, like, Oberon, like, I think I have, like, a tank build for Oberon right now, you have to keep in mind that you might be forced to play Oberon if you don't have the high enough intrinsics to get multiple options, because you will not have multiple options there every time. This is done with a couple intrinsics, being able to choose these different choices. Imagine having to play the Steel Path with Hydroid, and you don't even have a Hydroid build, you're like, oh, crap, I guess I have a Vitality and a Rolling Guard or whatever. So having good builds on, on pretty much everything would be helpful if... Because you're not going to be able to re-roll this stuff. Additionally, now I'm not going to do this, but having a good build on like every weapon could even be helpful for this too. So that's going to be uh, you know some things you can prepare for for the circuit. Now as far as the gameplay on the circuit, oh, another thing too, you can fashion frame your drifter. I actually did that yesterday. This is going to be the circuit. So um, when you're in this mode, it's going to rotate between different types of game modes. I think they start out with survival, then they went to excavation, then exterminate, and then I don't remember what the other one was. Uh, in, hidden in this environment will be things called Decree Fragments. Once you find three Decree Fragments, it will give you a power-up Decree, which is like a little, you know, roguelike buff. And also it will give you some resources and uh, intrinsics. And intrinsics are going to be a really important thing to grind up to make your Daviri experience uh, more easy. So if you are in here, make sure that one of your top priorities is going to be getting those uh Decree Fragments. Additionally, they did comment that no companions will be used here. So you will not have your Panzer Volpophila, you will not have your Smita, you will not have your Helios, or anything like that. And you might be like, wait, where's my vacuum and my enemy radar going to be? According to Rebecca, there will be built-in vacuum, enemy radar, and loot radar to your frame in Daviri. Now, I couldn't really see the loot radar working very well. I don't know how much loot radar they're really giving you, but the anime radar did seem like it was working pretty pretty nicely. I'm wondering, hey, can we actually get Universal Vacuum in the rest of the game too? Thanks. But yeah, your companions will not be here, so don't expect, uh, you know, Panzer Cat to revive you or whatever. You're going to be having to just... Whatever, whatever you have equipped, I hope it's got a decent build that can kill these, like, at least in this normal path, like level, like, 30 enemies. Remember, on the Steel Path, this will be... You're probably going to want to do a, a, a team setup on the Steel Path, honestly. Doing this solo on the Steel Path with randomized weapons sounds pretty rough. Um, but yeah, so you go through here, you'll get some intrinsics. This is going to be the Warframe-only circuit mode. And again, on the Steel Path, you'll grind to get your Incarnate Unlockers. Here's Stage 2, Excavation. Um, and you'll extract, and at the end of this, it will show you... I, I think it shows on Rebecca's screen. She got like 300 uh, circuit XP. and like, Now she can put some intrinsics into there. At the end here, you'll see uh, what they got from this loot. So as you can see right there, 335 circuit XP. If she was on the steel path, I don't know what the number would go up to, but I'm, again, I'm assuming more XP on the steel path. 
Um, and that's gonna go into her her uh, circuit progress bar, and eventually she'll get that Trinity Prime or Trinity Normal she was trying to grind for. So grinding this will be how you get Incarnate Unlockers. And then for the uh, the actual Daviri like bounties gameplay, you're gonna be riding on the horse and stuff like that. So grinding intrinsics again, this will probably be a better intrinsic grind to actually do the bounties versus doing the circuit. The circuit does not seem like the best intrinsic farm. Um, but yeah, this will be another thing. I'm not going to try to spoil too much of this. And by the way, this is looking really buggy. They actually crashed mid-stream when they were trying to do one of these. Um, yeah, right here, they, they crashed. She flew over here trying to do a horse race, and the game crashed. So uh, hopefully it's not too bad on day one. She knew it was going to crash, too, which is kind of sad. Um, so let's go over some more preparation stuff as far as what you can prepare for. Um you know, I said, maybe you're going to build on, like, the Paris, Paris Prime. Of course, the Paris Normal is going to also be fine, too. But if, if you don't have the Paris Prime for whatever reason. There you go, the game crash. I just want to show you guys that. Um, so let's show some stuff I've been doing. Now, you are going to, if you're trying to start preparing today, you are definitely a little bit late. Um, but let's just start off with, you know, going over some things. You might see in trade chat regularly, people are asking for, like, yo, want to buy Dread Riven, want to buy Paris Riven. Uh, if you are trying to get, like, a Lado Riven or whatever, you are pretty late to the, 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 uh, the, uh, the situation here. So I got a Lado Riven with crit damage and multi-shot. Getting a Riven for a weapon that you have nostalgic, uh, you know, value to, like the Latron. I'm assuming that we're going to get new Incarnate Unlockers on Sunday, like they were saying. Uh, I'm hoping the Dread is next week. But yeah, get some builds on things that you have seen from that leaked list that look good to you. Um, additionally, like I said, maybe getting builds on, like, like for, for example, we don't know yet, but I said earlier about the Yorelis thing. If I am forced to play Yoreli a bunch because people have gifted me Yorelis and I don't want to delete them, that would be a bit unfortunate because I don't want to play a level zero Yoreli. Like I said, in that gameplay footage, Megan was on a level zero Banshee. So they're going to make you play a level zero frame if you have a level zero frame. So that might be a problem. They might end up changing that because that sounds like a massive pain in the butt, uh, not having your abilities unlocked and stuff. So make sure you got decent builds on pretty much every frame you have if you can. If not, don't worry about it too much. They might end up changing it. Uh, additionally, uh, if you do not have, uh, if, like, let's just say you are a newer player. Like, actually, let's say you're a brand new player. You can choose to do uh, the Daviri as your starting point, not do Vor's Prize. If you are, if, if you already are someone that started the game, you don't need to worry about it. They will just send you an inbox message with the quest in it. Now, as far as Drifter. Um, you are going to be forced to play this as the Drifter. The Operator will not work. So I ended up doing some Fashion Frame on my Drifter, and I'm pretty happy with how it came out. Uh, let's just say, we, we started from, like, I don't know if I have any more. I started with, like, a, a purple Afro, and now I have this. So I'm more happy with this. Uh, and as far as accessories, I did buy some Tenogen because a lot of this Drifter cosmetic stuff doesn't look great. Um, but I bought the Zenoryu Mask, which is going to make it so you kind of look like a ninja. Uh, I have an eye patch. And I actually have the Drifter Void Shell skin on the body. The other options are not phenomenal. If you did the Nightwave season, you'll have like the Drifter Nightwave suit and some other stuff. But yeah, the, the, it seems like the, the Void Shell skin's the best as far as the Void Shell uh, textures. I mean, it's in Crimson Opulence, Ayaton Elegance, and Battle Worn Steel. Kind of hard to make it look exactly how I want it to. And you can't really wear like a great helmet for the Drifter. Um, I, I guess there's a hood, but. It, it, it's very, like, yes or no. Like, do you want to cover your entire, like, entire hair? I, I want to see the hair, too, so. Fashion framing your drifter as you will be forced to play the drifter could be nice if you care about that stuff. Additionally, let's say, now this is just speculation. Let's say you got super, super unlucky when you were picking your circuit stuff, and it's like, okay, I have the freaking, I have the Bratton, I have, like, the, the Kunai, and I've got the Skana. Like, just basic beginner weapons. And you're trying to play the circuit. What you could do as a backup plan is build an AOE type of amp. Now, I've got the uh, the 177 amp, the Replock uh, Circus and Propa, which is going to be good for Eidolons and Void Angels, but this is not exactly multi-target. The Propa can kill multiple enemies, but not in a long range. You might want to consider things like, uh, you know, a longer range... Uh, a longer range amp, like maybe the Lega Prism, which is a flamethrower, it can do some decent status chance at afar. Not the best crit, um, but yeah, maybe consider trying out some other amps. We'll see how necessary that ends up being. Um, but I'm kind of thinking like maybe something like Lega Propa Certus could be interesting. Um, additionally, things like 
uh, Eternal Onslaught, Eternal Eradicate are going to give you more amp damage. And as I'm guessing the Aura Worm will involve being killed by the amp, uh, maybe that will also be helpful. As we, we don't really know anything about the Aura Worm, so that's just speculation right now. So yeah, that's pretty much all I can really tell you guys for the last uh, you know last couple hours until Daviri comes out here. Get your uh, get your your Incarnon, well, future Incarnon weapons leveled up to a certain extent. Maybe get some builds on frames you don't normally use, as you might be forced to play them. Uh, actually, also get some platinum. If you don't have any platinum, I know this is a little bit late. Um, they, if you want to get legendary rank three on day one, they did say that the Drifters melee weapons will be purchasable for platinum. So we don't know how long it will take to grind them out. And also, there will be new there will be new arcades. If you want to watch my intrinsics guide, my pre-release intrinsics guide from like a month ago, I will link that in the description. Um, but basically, I've pretty much showed what I would prioritize as far as Drifter intrinsics from what they showed on the initial dev stream. I don't think they really showed any more intrinsics on the their little primetime stream. But yeah, things like if you want to get access to the Stalker right away, you're going to want to go with the Opportunity Intrinsic. You want to get the the Horse Teleportation uh, node, go into like the Horsemanship Intrinsic. Stuff like that. So if you want to watch it, feel free. Um, it's just, it's over-preparing, but, you know, we've been waiting for this update for so long. Might as well have some fun. So I hope you guys found this video fun and helpful. I will see you later tonight. Uh, probably on stream. I, I think I will stream today. Um, I didn't stream yesterday just because I had a lot of stuff going on. And I pretty much stopped streaming at like 4 a.m. the day before. But, yeah. Uh, starting tomorrow, cook, uh, cooking it. Kicking it into high gear, guys. Make sure you're sub. We'll be putting out tons of videos. I appreciate all the support, and I hope that you guys have fun in Daviri. Uh, see you very soon. Take it easy. Peace.